We are shown the Mexican streets, describing the daily routine of ordinary people. We are introduced to the diversity of values and life in the bustling city of Mexico City. A little girl celebrates her 13th birthday in a poor neighborhood in Mexico. They scatter confetti, throw candy, and sit around the birthday table with their friends. At that moment, the girl's brother, Jorge, comes down to the yard to congratulate the little girl and give her a bicycle. He works hard as a tour guide for American tourists, earning some money for the family. The mother asks for the bike back, but the boy refuses. The family has recently lost his father and it has greatly changed the boy's attitude toward life. After his brother leaves for another day's work, the mother forbids her daughter to ride her bike, which upsets her greatly. The audience is transported to the flight line, where the girls improve their English by reading educational books. The flight ends successfully, and the girls arrive in Mexico City. After all the paperwork is done, they meet Vadim Yushenko, the agency director, who will accompany them to Los Angeles. At the airport, the woman in charge, takes the girls' passports and escorts them to an interview. As they leave the airport, the Poles feel something wrong, because they have made visas and the agents do not need their passports. The directors ignore their questions about the need for passports and push the first girl into a tinted bus. The second girl manages to escape, distracting the attention of passing residents. The price of one escape is another disaster, the girl is hit by a car. While passing people try to save her life, the first girl is blackmailed with personal information and taken to an unknown destination. In the meantime, Jorge advertises to tourists a sphere of intimate services, photos of which are in a tourist brochure. The man agrees to the offer, and they set off into the closed streets of Mexico. Almost reaching the place, the man is surrounded by armed guys. The gang of guys takes all the money, the camera and jewelry, after which they shoot water guns and flee the scene. We are transported to a loud Mexican club filled with music, girls of easy virtue and dubious companies. A girl named Adriana, draws a gift for her brother to thank him for congratulations and a new bicycle. Adriana goes to town to present the flyer and make Jorge happy, but fate plays out a little differently. On the way to town, the girl is followed by a car, which after a while, blocks Adriana's path and takes her into the car. Jorge sits with his friend along the road and notices a guy on his sister's bicycle. He catches up with him and starts beating him up, because he realizes that the guy stole the bike. The beaten guy admits that he found it in the street and proves that it wasn't his fault. They go to the scene of little Adriana's kidnapping and find a flyer that was addressed to Jorge. The boys go to the police so that their sister can be found quickly and brought home. But they end up learning that it was probably a Russian kidnapping from Mexico. The man says that the search will be hard, because the little girl's pure blood is very valuable on the market. Globalization is the very phenomenon that has brought a large number of Russian-speaking residents to Mexico, who are involved in theft and illegal business. The guys refuse to help find his sister and leave, leaving him in despair. The man admits that girls are often sold in the airport area for huge sums of money. So perhaps little Adriana is on her way to the airport. At this time, the Polish girl is brought to the scene of what is happening. There are several young girls sitting in a small room, little Adriana among them. The agency director commits a punch to the girl's face and abuses her, after which we are transported to the story of coming to Mexico City. The girl dreamed of a better future for her young son and decided to go to Mexico. She was promised the big money she needed to move to America. They lived in a small apartment together with her grandmother, who helped a little with household chores and raising her grandson. The agency that brought the girl into Mexican slavery, asking for the residential addresses of her parents and her young son, further blackmailed her. Jorge again becomes frustrated with his buddies, who refuse to ensure the guy in search of his little sister. Now the guy trusts only himself and goes to a small gathering of girls where Adriana might be. At this time, the girls are given pills that make them not feel pain. The immobile girl refuses water and later throws away the pill she hid in her mouth. Adriana meets Veronica and brings a picture of her son. They cry and support each other as they find themselves in a terrible situation. Jorge does not finish his search and tries to find or find some information about other slavers. He finds himself in the middle of town, where a slave with his little sister is hidden in a locked yard. The girls are taken out and carried into a large truck, which the boy notices. Jorge follows his movement and steals the car, goes after the truck. The girls get very nauseous in the truck, but they try to support and help each other. The Polish woman claims that the pills make her feel worse. The girls are brought to a remote, quiet place. The men choose Veronica, and everyone else leaves the truck. Jorge watches what is going on, and waits for the moment to bring her sister back. Little Adriana is forced to pose, for intimate magazines. After a while, the truck leaves for a new location. Jorge watches his movement, but his car is abandoned because he runs out of gas. The guy decides to run so he doesn't lose sight of Adriana. The girls are placed in a cage, 
where they are given some rest and food. The Polish girl refuses to eat because she is very sick and homesick. Jorge stops at a small store to get a drink of water, rest, and call her mother. After hearing his sister's name, the boy passes out and goes on a search. He finds a long tunnel of cages where the girls used to sit. An attendant drives up to the slavery, and the boy quickly hides in a corner of the room. The director inspects the premises, but does not find the boy. It gets dark outside, and the girls are illegally transferred across the border. After crossing a small river, their path is stopped by the police. The officer, named Ray, returns to town after spending the night in a small hotel. He calls his wife, saying he is coming soon and misses his little cat who is sick. They are about to bring some police units to the border to avoid an illegal crossing. A school bus with children learning Spanish arrives at the prison where the chief criminals and the rest of the horrible criminals are serving their sentences. In the same place, surrounded by our main characters, the girls, to whose words the police do not respond and avoid in every possible way. Jorge hides in the officer's car, for a border crossing. But the guy fails to do so, as the officer notices him and threatens him with the police. Jorge confesses that his sister has been kidnapped and taken to New Jersey. He asks that he be released and that little Adriana be taken from slavery. The officer does not listen to his confession and takes him to the police station. At this time, the girls are led through the wilderness again. The escort prays near the large cross, healing his sins. Jorge escapes from the police station, but the officer finds him again on his way to New Jersey. Ray offers his help, and after some thought, the guy agrees. They get acquainted and talk a little about life. Ray confesses that he was in jail on private investigations and won't say what was going on. He complains about the guy's terrible smell and inquires about his hygiene. At this time, the girls arrive at the place of detention. The man is about to take little Adriana away, but the Polish woman refuses and asks to take herself away. The man does not like the girl's behavior and beats her again. Little Adriana is sold to an old man for $80. The girl is escorted to a braided gazebo where they do their dirty business. As evening falls, Jorge takes a shower and returns to the officer's house. Ray learns that his cat has been put to sleep, and his wife is very sad about it. They decide to take a little break and grab a bite to eat at a roadside cafe. At this point, Jorge recognizes the man who accompanied the girls and his sister and decides to talk to him. The man and the son of one of the girls quickly run away from Jorge, hiding among the vans. The boy is spotted by a policeman who intends to take him to the station, but Jorge is rescued by an officer. Ray asks the boy to take the boy to the police station, and he will deal with the man himself. Ray tries to resolve the conflict to find out some information about the other girls and learns about a website with agency services. Polish girl and Adriana are sent to a room with an adult man. They shower and the girl tries to calm the little girl down. At this point, a man walks in and calls her into bed. The girl refuses, and he forces another pill. At this point, the guys arrive at the cyber cafe. Ray enters a website with a database of girls and invites Jorge over. The guy quickly finds his sister and learns about the bidding for the little girl's body. Jorge guesses that the boy in the hands of a pedophile, bought from this website. Ray provides all the passwords and information to the cyber police, who begin to deal with the actual case. They learn that the auction is only a few days away and decide to head to New Jersey. In the meantime, the girls are relaxing in a small room. From the attendant's phone conversation, they learn that Adriana's auction will take place the next day. Ray sleeps in the front seat, and Jorge drives the car to New Jersey. He learns that the officer works for an insurance company. The car with the girls stops for the guys to mind their own business, but the girls are more resourceful and run out the back doors. A short time later, they find themselves in the middle of town. It seemed that the danger had passed, and the girl tries to call her relatives. The only thing the girl manages to find out is that her son was also taken by agents and his mother doesn't know where he is. After a few minutes of conversation, Adriana returns to the girl and warns her of the danger. But the girls are picked up again by the escorts and return to the truck. Veronica cannot bear the news of her son's death and jumps off the cliff, dying. Little Adriana is left all alone with a picture of the girl's dead son. The next morning, the men bring Adriana in for a ransom. The woman wonders where the other girls are, but the questions are ignored. The guys book some rooms in New Jersey. Ray sends the guy to rest, and he goes to the police himself to find out their actions against trafficking in the girls' bodies. He learns that the police are not interested in slavery cases because their movements cannot be traced and the likelihood of finding clubs in different parts of America is very high. Ray returns to the hotel and calls his spouse to coordinate with her to withdraw a huge amount of money from the joint account. The man apologizes and says he'll be a few more days. It turns out that their daughter Carly also went missing 10 years ago, but the search has not been successful. He doesn't understand where the search for the little girl is leading.
but he doesn't stop believing it. Love held the highest place in Ray's life, and became his greatest disappointment. He was deeply in love with Carly's mother, wild and lively as Ray calls her. The affair proved to be unrequited, and Alma became pregnant by another man. Recently the police came to his house to report the girl's death. They found a letter that had been written 10 years earlier but had never been sent to Ray. In it, it said Carly was his daughter, but the girl needed money. She put the girl in foster care, and rarely took the little girl back. Alma had crossed the border into the Juarez area a decade earlier and may have written a letter before she left. Alma is a heavy drug addict, and she was without her daughter when she returned to Mexico. When the police asked about Carly's whereabouts, the woman said she had left the girl with her father, but they knew that wasn't true. The only thought the police had was to sell the girl at auction. The man and his wife Petty had always wanted a little girl, but if they had read that letter 10 years ago, their fate would have been different. We are taken to Adriana's room, she prays and addresses the dead Veronica. The girl asks that she be sold to a good man who will not abuse her. At this time, the auction begins, the guys enter the name Traveler and offer large ransom amounts for the little girl. The auction ends and the ransom amount becomes $32,000. They get an email address and head to the meeting place. Ray finds herself in a small house, where an attendant sits with Adriana. The girl makes an introduction, but she suspects something is amiss. She asks for her first retreat right in the house, and wants to see blood on the sheets. Ray and Adriana are locked in a room, and the girl cuts her hands and smears blood on the sheets. After a short time, Mihail, the girl's escort, visits the room and justifies the seclusion. Jorge hides in the bushes, and after the officer comes out with the girl, beats Mihail with a pickaxe. The woman stands with a gun and intends to end Ray's life, but the police quickly arrive on the scene and seal off the building. Jorge hugs Adriana and thanks the officer for the job he did. From the basement of the building, the police bring out several dozen girls who have been lurking around the basement cages, waiting for their auctions. The girl thanks Ray, giving him her pendant, in turn the officer gives the ransom money for Adriana to the boy's family. He asks them to stay out of trouble and protect the girl. The family revives and flies to Mexico City. The brother takes the girl to a temple where their mother prays. The woman rejoices greatly and cannot believe what she sees. Ray finds the money he gave to Jorge's family in the car door. He returns home having bought a new cat, as the opening of a new chapter in family life. Jorge's latest criminal case is the murder of Vadim Yushchenko, the agency handler who invited girls to Mexico City and stole his sister. But his heart is troubled when he sees Vadim's young son following him. 